Hello, friends, and welcome to the PrepWell podcast. I'm your host, Phil Black. And if you have an 8th, ninth, or 10th grader with big aspirations like the Ivy League or military service academies like West Point, ROTC, or athletic scholarships, boom, you've come to the right place. My specialty, my superpower, if you will, is preparing families for these competitive programs. I'll teach you what your child should do, when they should do it, and how you can help. So stick around and prepare to out-prepare. Hello, friends, and welcome to the PrepWell podcast. Today, I'm breaking this episode into two parts. In part one, I will encourage all of you sophomores class of 2022, who are not yet enrolled in Preppel Academy, to enroll. The deadline is May 30th. That's next week. What that means is that if you aren't enrolled by then, there's no turning back. Preppel Academy will no longer be available to you and your cohort. In part two, I talk about time, and more specifically, the misallocation of time. How do we handle going from too little time to too much time, as in 2019 BC, before corona, to 2020 PC, post-corona. How are you using your time? Are you optimizing your time? Or are you wasting your time? We'll touch on all of the above. All right, so let's do this. Firstly, if you're a sophomore, class of 2022, or the parent of a 2022 sophomore, and not a current prep weller, I highly encourage you to enroll in the program, especially if you found these weekly podcasts helpful, because the weekly video lessons inside Preppel Academy, delivered right to your phone, are tailored specifically to you, and by you I mean to your child, not to some generic audience. And you get to pick which plan best suits you. Is it the pathway plan? geared toward smart and motivated students who may not want to apply to the most selective colleges in the country, the Yales and the Harvards and the Stanfords of the world, but they do want to put together a RAD application and they want to be in the running for other great schools that aren't impossible to get into. Or maybe you do want to put yourself to the test by applying to a top 20 school. Great, we've got the Ivy plan. In the Ivy plan, I give you the inside scoop on what you need to do to be competitive at these low admit rate schools. If you're an athlete who plans to use your athleticism as a lever to get into college, awesome. Try the athlete plan. Or if you see yourself as a military officer down the road in the Navy or Air Force, the Army, maybe the Marines, and you'd like the idea of going to a world-class college for free, then the military plan might be for you. And for more details about all of these plans, head over to prepwillacademy.com. And importantly, ding, 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 in case you missed it, when I mentioned it 30 seconds ago, your last chance to enroll, if you're a sophomore, class of 2022, is next week, by May 30th. And the reason we have this deadline is because without a call to action, It's too easy to procrastinate. We all know this. We all do this. And procrastination is the root of the stress and anxiety in the college admissions process. Students and families left to their own devices simply wait too long until it's too late. The PrepWell program delivers relevant and timely video lessons directly to you. Again, I'm talking about the students here every Sunday to make sure you know what's going on to make sure you're tracking milestones and deadlines, and to make sure you have a plan. And by the way, the lessons extend far beyond deadline reminders and checklists and generic SAT advice. I dive into how to be a high-performing human, how to build lifelong study habits, how to develop a personal brand, how to think about careers and colleges, and how to shape your own future. Enrolled prep wellers also get access two weekly office hours with me, where I open up appointments for prep wellers and their parents to personally ask me any questions they want. Many families are taking advantage of this time to ask me their very specific questions about their particular situations. 
As most know by now, college admissions is a multi-year activity that requires a roadmap that lets you know what's coming up when and what actions you need to take. Do people wing it and survive? Sure, they do. But I'd rather have a plan, especially given the craziness of what's going on with COVID-19 and this shutdown and maybe not even going back to school in the fall, not to mention the cost of college these days. If there was ever a time to enroll in a program like this, now would be it. And since Prepwell is the only program of its kind, the choice should be easy. So, all of you class of 2022 sophomores, you soon-to-be rising juniors, head over to prepwellacademy.com right now and enroll. I hope to see all of you on the inside. And if you end up not enrolling, I still wish you all the luck in the world and fair winds and following seas. Okay, now let's get back to our regularly scheduled programming. Time. Let's talk about time. In this new COVID-19 world, our relationship with time has been turned on its head. For most of us, in a pre-COVID world, time was a fleeting luxury that we never seemed to have enough of. If I only had an extra hour on Wednesday nights after swim practice, life would be perfect. I'd be able to go to bed by 11 p.m. instead of 1 a.m. Wouldn't that be grand? What I would do for an extra hour of sleep or studying or socializing, just one hour would be a game changer. Versus today, while sheltering in place, sometimes it seems like there are more hours in the day than we actually need. Boy, how quickly things change. With this extra time on your hands, have you ever considered how you've been allocating your time? Do you like what you've been devoting time to? How have your days been broken down? And mind you, in this case, I'm talking about time management pre-COVID. If you want to hear my thoughts on how to manage time during COVID, listen to episode 29. But my real point here is to use this downtime to think back about what we've been doing in the past to see if it's something we want to continue to do. Or maybe we want to hit the reset button once this corona clears. This pause in the action is a gift, and we should use it wisely. How much of your time is dedicated to school, homework, band practice, ASB meetings, piano lessons, video games, chatting with your friends, once again, I'm referring to pre-COVID time. Of course, how you're spending your time now during lockdown is different from how you would normally spend your time. But I want to use this opportunity to make sure that you're aware of your old ways versus new ways of divvying up time. And as we transition back to, quote, normal, hopefully soon, how will you settle back in? Have you ever thought about whether your pre-COVID daily or weekly schedule represented the right allocation of time for what you want out of life? Or let me put it another way. Have you ever tried to assess whether your allocation of time was aligned with your ambitions? Let me break this down into two questions. How well are you optimizing your time? And do you really care? If you've never even thought about these questions... By the time you're filling out your common application the summer before your senior year, these questions may come back to haunt you. The common application asks you to estimate how much time you spend in each of your extracurricular activities every week. Marching band, 8 hours. Volunteer work, 5 hours. Varsity soccer, 12 hours. And on down the list. If this is the first time you've ever thought about how you're spending your time every week, and how that shapes your application, you may be in for a big surprise. And before revealing that surprise, let me issue two caveats. Number one, this type of thinking and planning is most useful for high aspiration students early in their high school career who want to be competitive when applying to the country's top schools. If you're not interested in being that competitive, then this information may be interesting, curious, but not something to worry about too much. 
If you're happy going to a mid-tier school with high acceptance rates, then optimizing your time may not be a top priority. There's nothing wrong with that. Caveat number two, this advice is meant to help you position yourself for success in getting admitted to highly selective colleges. That's the goal. This advice is not for everyone. If you don't like the idea that optimizing your time may cramp your style or cut into your Netflix watching or your playing video games time, then ignore the advice. I'm not in the business of trying to convert anyone from being unmotivated to motivated. I'm simply trying to help the motivated students make sure they aren't making irreversible mistakes because they misunderstood how this process works. I think this will become clear with an example. Let's say you're a soccer player, a very good one. You always make the all-star team. You've been playing on an elite club soccer team since the age of seven. You're on one of the top teams in the region. You have a personal trainer who helps you with your conditioning twice a week. Every summer is dedicated to practice, travel, tournaments all over the country. Soccer is one of your key extracurricular activities. If you try to put a number on how many hours you've dedicated to playing soccer, you might even need a calculator. Let's think about it. Let's call it an hour and a half a day, six days a week, 48 weeks a year for, what, seven and a half years? That's thousands and thousands of hours. It's over 5,000 hours. Now, if you end up not being good enough to become a recruited athlete, that is someone who's being actively recruited by college soccer coaches, then this extracurricular activity doesn't actually give you much mileage on your application. To an admissions officer, especially at the most selective schools, it won't move the needle for them. I know that's hard for some of you to hear because of all the investment of time and effort and money and resources you've put into the sport, but it's the truth. It's no different from another activity that you've spent equal time doing, whether it's band or student government or volunteering or piano. Now, it's certainly not a negative, but it's not an out-of-the-park home run winner either, like I think some people think it is. I know it seems like a big deal to you and your parents, and your identity is likely wrapped up into being a soccer player, but it just doesn't register with the most selective schools as a key differentiator. Again, unless you're a recruited athlete. Why? Because at the most selective schools, they are looking for internationally and nationally ranked students, whether it's for soccer or singing or science Olympiad or entrepreneurship. As a talented but non-recruited athlete, you will likely instead fall into the category of well-rounded students. Assuming you have good grades and strong standardized test scores and recommendations, this status pits you against tens of thousands of other well-rounded applicants, which does not bode well for your chances of getting in. This fact may give you pause. This may have you wondering to yourself, then why exactly did I spend every waking moment for the last eight years playing soccer? What was the point? Now, of course, we could do a whole podcast on that question alone, and I do address that question in more detail in episode 16. I think that episode's called, Should Your Child Specialize in a Sport? And it's a fair question, and one that I think you should have an answer to by 8th or ninth grade, before you get to this position, or into this predicament, as it were. But what really gets me, and I apologize if I'm pouring salt on the wounds here, but it has to be said, is comparing the 5,000 hours of soccer playing, which, if you do not become a recruited athlete, will have marginal upside on your application, to the number of hours spent on studying for the SAT or ACT, which, in most cases, will have a massive impact on your application, as well as eligibility for merit-based scholarships and other benefits. Let's talk about these two numbers. I personally know students who scoff at the suggestion of putting in 20 or 30 hours total, 
20 or 30 hours of study time into the SAT or ACT compared to 5,000 hours of playing or practicing soccer. Think about this for a second. Many students are reluctant to allocate 20 to 30 hours of SAT or ACT prep, one of the most consequential tests any high schooler will ever take, but they don't bat an eye at 5,000 plus hours of an activity that will have marginal impact on how they will fare in the college admissions process. Does that make any sense? Now, don't get me wrong. If you love soccer that much and the 5,000 hours was all time well spent, then by all means, you made the right decision. But if you're going to scoff at the idea of putting in 20 to 30 hours of SAT prep and then complain that you didn't get into any of the highly selective schools, then we have a problem. There's a disconnect here. In general, if you spend the preponderance of your time playing a sport that crowds out participating in other activities, which it often does, and you don't end up good enough to be recruited, and you complain about putting in 20 to 30 hours of SAT prep, basically 1% of the time that you spent playing soccer, then not getting into a highly selective college is on you. It's not on the system. It's not the SAT's fault. It's not the college board's fault. It may be the fault of a misallocation of time or an unawareness of how easy it is to fall into this trap. And listen, I'm not trying to be an a-hole here. I'm trying to get your attention and share what I see every single day in my college admissions practice. I talk to students and parents who continue to be shocked at how competitive the admissions process is and how it is that their child doesn't stand a chance to get into college X, Y, or Z. Meanwhile, when I do an audit of how the child is spending their time, it becomes abundantly clear. They are not spending time on things that translate well into a compelling college application. Of course, I go over all of these issues inside Preppel Academy and do my best to make sure that students don't fall into these traps. I have multiple videos that show how to audit your child's extracurriculars. You can go on YouTube right now. I would look up one that's called Pretty Good Pete, University of Pennsylvania. Check that one out. And by the way, this is a big reason why I start students in 9th and 10th grade. So I don't have to have these conversations with families in 11th and 12th grade. Because the party's over by then. So use this shutdown, this pause in the action, from our usual frenetic schedules to figure out how your child is managing their time. And will their allocation of time help or hurt them down the road based on their aspirations? And of course, enroll in Preppel Academy if you want me as a guide along the way. That's all I've got for you today, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for the continued support. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you do know a parent with an 8th grader, ninth grader, 10th grader, even 11th grader in high school that might find this helpful, please share the episode with them. You can do that by finding that small box with a tiny arrow pointing up. That's the share button. Click that button. Text your friends this link to this episode with a little personal note from you recommending that they give it a listen. If you have questions, comments, or an idea for an upcoming episode, please reach out to me by email. DM me on Instagram, preppel underscore academy. Check out my blog. Check out Facebook, LinkedIn. I'd love to hear from you. Until next week. Goodbye, good luck, and never stop preparing. This podcast is brought to you by PrepWell Academy. PrepWell Academy is my one-of-a-kind online mentoring program that delivers to your ninth or 10th grader a short, highly relevant video from me every week every Sunday, in fact, where I give them a heads up about what they should be thinking about to stay ahead of the game. To get these valuable lessons into your child's hands, please head over to prepwellacademy.com and enroll your child today.